Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 10 of Direwolf20's All the Mod 7 Skyblock, uh, where I've prepped a bunch of resources to get auto-crafting going today. Um, you know me, once I get Applied Logistics up, there's two things I want to get. Auto-crafting and wireless access to the network. Auto-crafting first, wireless access next. Hopefully. We'll see. Now that we have lots and lots of power, uh, we should have no problem expanding our network and making things cost a lot. Uh, the gas turbine is doing great. He's throttled himself, so you can see we currently aren't using any fuel, which is cool. Uh, I'm assuming what's happening is the magmatic dynamos are keeping, you know, this thing up in full. So any any usage that we have going on is probably lava-based right now, and we're barely using any of this fuel. Uh, but of course, if I were to come over here and, you know, kick off a little bit of uh, stuff, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Let's do that, actually, because I could use some more resources. I just used a whole bunch. Uh, let's grind this stuff down into gravel, and then we'll get ourselves some more metals and whatnot. Um, this thing's running great, by the way. I did throw some void upgrades into my drawers upstairs because some of them are already filling up to the 2000 mark, and we definitely don't want to, you know, have any overflow into the uh, applied energistics system. Uh, it wouldn't be the end of the world if we did, you know, not a, not a huge deal, but I'm just trying to keep my cells uh, pretty clear. So now this thing should be cooking, cooking, and we should have lots of power usage happening. Presumably. Hey, there we go. There's the aluminum and whatnot. Cool. Sweet. Now it's coming together. So at some point we'll see this thing start to flicker a little bit. Yeah, see, look, now we're starting to use a little bit of, uh, a little bit of production. That's cool. Isn't that neat? love it i like that generator it is super cool it is super cool so hey let's get some uh some stuff going on today with uh auto crafting what do you say uh so here's here's the plan right um we're going to i was gonna make an i want to make a jetpack too right that would be cool uh that might happen today as well but let's get the the basics going right so i think over here might be a good place for me to run uh, some cables and get a little bit of auto crafting going on, and I think if I'm if I'm reading this correctly, things may have changed a bit. Um, I think we have pattern providers now. I think this is the way that you um, get stuff going. So, oh my goodness, that is a lot of millibuckets. Okay. Uh, there's apparently some tanks in there. Um, so it looks like, didn't, we used to do this with interfaces. I think pattern providers is now a different block than the interface to do the crafting with. So we've got patterns that go in here, and then there's a return inventory slot. So the molecular assemblers should be smart enough to return them to their pattern provider. I've only made a couple to kind of get, you know, the ball rolling, but we'll do more in a bit. And obviously I'm using some very basic cables here. Um, we should upgrade these to the good ones in a little bit at some point. But I'm going to do uh, a 4K crafting storage with a crafting coprocessor behind it. And then I'll do another one of those right here. Cool. Network Apprentice. Woot. What is that? Just a number of, uh, yeah. Reach eight channels using devices on a network. Yeah, I definitely did that. Cool. Uh, so now I should have no problem setting up. Uh, I've got my terminals and monitors and whatnot. So um, if we threw a cable up here, that's where I usually throw my pattern encoding terminal. This is where we make our patterns. Oh, cool, look at that. Fluid substitutions, item substitutions. All right, neato. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Um, and I'll do the whole chandelier type structure that I usually do with applied energistic stuff at some point in the future. Uh, so this is your pattern access terminal. This is where you can access your patterns. Boom. And then we've got, uh, actually, I don't know that you need to be, because you're not a terminal per se, you're a block. So you're going to look more like that. Or do you? I don't know. Crafting monitor? Maybe that has to be, maybe I'm mistaken on what that is. Uh, yeah, I think we'll see crafting patterns here. Oh, look at that. This is a different UI. Look at that. CPU 1, CPU 2. Crafting statuses. Nice. I like that. All right, so we didn't need the crafting monitor. That's fine. Um... So what else do we got going on here? Let's get our first couple patterns. So usually the first pattern I make is a pattern. Uh, and you know what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do a pattern provider. I'm gonna make another one. Oh yeah, let's get that going. Well, 
maybe not that. That's got a lot of prereq components into it. Um, boom. You know what I want to do? I want to try something. Is there... Um, this is one of the features I love from um, refined storage is the ability to like get it to craft things it doesn't have for the recipe that you want. I'm wondering if that's been added to applied energistics in some way. Um, so by the way, we don't have to come down here to do this. We can use the pattern provider access terminal, which is this guy, pattern access terminal. Um, and you can see shift clicking doesn't work, but that's okay. Uh, we'll do that, that, and that. So the buttons here, display node, show visible pattern providers, show visible pattern providers with empty slots. I like that. Show all pattern providers. That's cool. And then we can search. Beautiful. All right, so now we should be able to, uh, if we looked at applied energistics, no? Does that not work? Shouldn't that work? Is that not applied energistics? Yeah, formation core. Interesting. So there's the number two and then there's a little plus, which I assume means we can craft it. So like, how do we how do we force craft? How do we force craft with uh, with AE2? I don't know. I'm trying different combinations of buttons right now. None of them are working. So uh, I guess, I don't know. Meh, not too worried. So let's see what happens if I wanted to make a pattern doohickey right now. So, ooh, control click to craft unavailable items. That's what's up. That's 100% what's up. So start that bad boy. Ah, uh, that is cool. I guess he crafted them already. Sweet. That is great. I love it. All right, cool. And then if I wanted to, um, we could... Uh, Get the Crushin factory set up, right? Um, that would be cool. Let's get. Um, I should do some things to cut down on some of the wiring that we have going on here, but you know me, that's not going to happen too easily. But I wanted to. I wanted to test this out with the new thingy, my bobbers. awesome uh so if i wanted to connect that up i assume and i want to test this but i assume i have to still um extract we'll rewire some things at some point specifically probably using laser io instead of some of the pipes cables because that'll save us some trouble There we go. All right, so then you should be ready to make some dust. So let's try this out. So if I wanted to make, for example, tin dust, and we came to a crusher, and we said that, that seems like it's working pretty good. I like that, okay. So far I'm very happy with this, with this, with the format of this setup. Cool. Now I'm pretty sure, like I said, we're gonna have to transfer the item over there. But if I wanted 10 of this, boom, and then we looked over here, we would see CPU one is crafting 10 copper dust. Nice. Now you've probably already finished that, but you're not, but what I should be able to do, hmm. But I don't think these guys can be configured to input and output on the same side, right? On the bottom. Output, input slash output purple. Uh, let's try that and eject on. Does that work? Because that would be cool. Yeah, that actually does work. Sweet. So if I wanted three of you. Boom, that works. Hey, cool. All right. Thank you, Mechanism. When did they add that? I don't remember that being a thing in the past, but that makes life a whole heck of a lot easier because now I can automate all these machines relatively easily. So, yeah, like in some of the quality of life features that Applied Energistics have added, I'm very pleased with some of this stuff. That's awesome. All right, let's get a couple more of these pattern doohickeys going because I would like to automate a few more steps. Uh, so can I get one, two, three, four of you? Sweet. Excellent. And then if I control click this, start, start, he should be good to go. Nice, I like it. All right, that's cool. All right, so let's get one here. 
Let's get a energized smelter stood up. Let's get a basic tier installer stood up. And then on this pattern, I'm gonna throw glass in there. Cool. Um, and then this pattern can be in the molecular assembler for quartz glass. And then all the way down here, we're gonna set you up. And remember, we wanna set the down to be um, purple and auto eject. Cool. And it wouldn't be a terrible idea to get more redstone. That would not be a terrible idea at all. Boom, boom. You take care of that for me. How are you doing? You still work on stuff? Nice, look at this, all this processing of ores and whatnot, loving it. Okay, uh, enriching factory. I could probably do a similar dude here. We should have um, one of those set up. Okay. Liking it. We're probably gonna run out of channels pretty soon, but we'll do the channels problem in the future. Uh, but remember you, we want a side control to purple and eject, and then boom, that should be taken care of that. Enriched redstone. I'm just going to stock this for now, but eventually we'll do like an auto, you know, keep in stock kind of deal. So now I should be able to request some upgrades, right? Uh, I have to run the cable still. I haven't done that yet. Boom and boom. Okay. So if I wanted speed upgrades, for example, uh, I have to remember to put this pattern into the infusing factory, and now I should be able to request sweet infused alloys. Now I know we're going to want 32 of these. So I'm going to kick that off, and that should start crafting and work pretty quickly, in theory. Yeah, it is. Nice. Though I'm interested to see the fact that you seem to be... Why did you do that? Stop that. Stop whatever you're doing. Oh, you auto-ejected. Yeah, okay, no. So you had output on the right. Yeah, we should be careful with that. We should be careful with that all the time. Yep, that's on me. That's on me. Okay, that's my mistake and eject on for the smelter as well. Cool, and then uh, that, that, that should be cool. All right, let me get uh, this and do this. I was like, why isn't it working? Now we should be cool. Awesome. No, I didn't want to do that. Is it shift click? Yeah, it is. That was meant to be done here. Um, now we should probably teach patterns for osmium and probably gold, but we'll get there. Okay, well that's close. So if I said, hey, give me glass, how are we for sand? We are pathetically low on sand. Luckily, I started a process which should give me a bunch of sand real quick. I like this flux hammer. We can upgrade it even more. We can get to the point where we have some really ridiculous generation of resources. Like, it's going to get pretty stupid. We should also look into mystical agriculture too, though, because that might not be a bad plan and then there's productive bees which i might play with too because i think we've only really played with that ever once in a series is that right am i remembering this correctly so uh yeah that's a thing all right 
right, so if I wanted like 100 glass, that shouldn't be a problem. Oh my goodness, that's a loud and annoying sound. But it's working. Oh, and let's split on, right? Um, so we've got four speeds and one energy in there. Uh, we'll get a few more of these. For now, I think I'm low on stuff, so let me just get some osmium. Is this 10? Yeah, it's 10. Yeah, the reason I wanted to automate the crusher and stuff is because I knew I was going to be doing a lot of this going forward. Okay. So mechanism upgrade, we're going to want four more of these. I made one too many, whoops. It's fine. Now we're cooking. Beautiful. What do you got for me? Anything good? No. Protection, mending, unbreaking, respiration, aqua affinity, rebounding. Melee attackers may find themselves much further away. I don't love the rebounding. Well, that is kind of cool. 45 emeralds and a diamond helmet? I could do that. It's not a bad trade, right? I don't know, like, there seems to be a mod in here that's, uh... Hey, get back here. All you want. Alright, now go away. Yeah, I know. See what I did? Give me leather. I need leather. I'm gonna hang on to this, and then uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep an eye on the trades, because it seems like there's a mod that the bottom trade for wandering traders is like a crazy ridiculous enchant going on. Um so, having that seems like a cool idea to me. Alright, good. So, is this all set up now? Alright, should we look into wireless now? Let's do that. Wireless. Uh, I would like a wireless crafting terminal. Uh, so, for that, we're going to need some significant stuff. Uh, we're going to need a wireless receiver, which is going to be a Fluix Pearl, which needs an Ender Pearl, which I can get. Okay. Um... Cool. Cool. ME terminal. But I wanted the I wanted the crafting one, so a crafting terminal, right? Are we really uh out of these guys? Out of logic processors? I thought I had a bunch of them. You know what? I kicked off a craft. I don't know if I ever went and got it. Yeah, see we have a few. And to be fair, I've been using a lot of them for some other things lately, so that makes sense. All right, so crafting terminal uh, needs a crafting terminal. We're getting there on the auto crafting, which is cool. Right? All right, so that's two of the three pieces. The dense energy cell is going to be not too bad, I don't think. That's not bad at all. All right, and then we just need a wireless access point, which is going to be another one of these. That's cool. Uh, and don't we need a security terminal or something like that? I feel like we did, but I don't know if we still do. But I feel like that's what we needed, right? Am I wrong? Uh, for now, let's just stick you there. Device online, 16 meter range. We might want wireless boosters for that, because 16 meters doesn't seem particularly large. But I don't know how many we can get. Uh, I guess we'll find out. So that is ender pearl dust, which we can throw in a pulverizer, and it's one for one, huh? I'm impatient. And everybody's like, what? No, Dyer, not you. I've never noticed that before. All right, let's get some Certus and some... Well, that looks like we're getting that many. All 
And you can enriching chamber for that. Oh, you're slow enrichment chamber? Rip. Really need to get more speed and, you know, but whatever. All right, so we'll start with 10 and see how good of a range that gets us. That's pretty good, 47 meters, that should last for a while. And 22 AE per tick, let's see, RF is 44. Uh, RF a tick, that's nothing. That's 100% doable. All right, so you need to be linked, which I think happens at the controller, doesn't it? In this one, or am I wrong about that? I might need that security station thing. I, uh, you know, between refined storage and applied energy six, I always forget. But I'm pretty sure we need a security terminal for this to work. Uh, so we're gonna need one of these. I'll be back in a second after I make the security terminal because I remember that being a slightly longer craft. Uh, it needs the 16k storage, so we're gonna need. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Whoa, more of these. Yeah, be right back. All right, so that's the 16k storage that we need for the security terminal. And usually I just would stick that wherever-ish. Um, it's not super important where it lives. And this is where we can link this guy to that. And now we are just low on power instead of not having a link. So that is cool. And then you can get charged up on this guy. Sweet. All right, so let's give it a shot because I want to see how this works. So number one, feels so good. I love it. Sort by number of items. I usually do descending. That looks very familiar. Cool. JEI search is what we've got going on. So that's cool. Um, sweet. Now, can I set this as a hotkey? Because that's what I like to do. Controls, keybinds, category, open wireless terminal. Can I make that tab? So it looks like, so I can open a wireless terminal, unless it doesn't like that tab has a keybind conflicts. Do that. Hey, that's cool. And it doesn't even need to be on my hot, beautiful. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. All right, so now the good news is, we have a bunch of quests we get to hand in with a bunch of random rewards, along with a bunch of experience. I'm pretty sure, by the way, there's a collect all rewards button up at the top right here. Hooray, all the rewards. Sweet. So one thing I'm really gonna need to do, and I mean really, really, is come up with a way to get passive mobs to spawn. Because I was really hoping that there would be passive mobs over here, and no such luck. Um, so there's there's chicken feed, which we can use. Um, I, we have to feed it to chickens, and that will... Um, creates the golden egg, single use for chicken. So this guy, I think, is what we would use. Um... Beetroot, carrot, potato, but we would need a we would need a chicken. But this thing is what would create the golden egg, and that's used to create delightful dirt, which spawns passive mobs. So that's one option for mob spawns. I don't see much else, right? Um, like uh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. We're gonna have to figure out a way to get passive mob spawns. I don't know that. One thing I wanted to do, and remember, we can use the Philosopher's Stone um, from Project E. We can use this to transmute mobs. So one thing we could do, I wonder if I could use this to convert llamas into other kinds of, right? That could be a way to go. That might work. Next time we get a llama, we could transmute them into other types of mobs, right? That 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 is possibly a way to go with this. 
I like that thought. Should we look into that? Yeah. And then we can lead them into the into here, and that would be cool. Because remember, like, you don't want to do that to, to hostile mobs, but passive mobs, I think it would be fine to do that too. Yeah, that could be fun. That's one way to get it to work. Yeah, next time we get llamas, I'm going to do that for sure. Okay, that's cool. What else did I want to look at today? I wanted to look at making um, the All the Modium book, because I want to understand um, the All the Modium mod. So here's some GitHub, Discord, and Reddit links. That's cool. Ors. Um, yeah, so we're not going to find ores because this is a sky block, right? There's dimensions. Oh, there's a mining dimensions. Okay, maybe that's how we get the all the modium ore and the vibranium, the unobtainium. Um, in the other dimension, deep underground, usually very close to piglin villagers. Um, in the end highland biome. This one can also be found everywhere in the mining dimension. So it looks like we might have to go to a mining dimension or the other. Um, so let's see, teleport pad is used to teleport to the mining dimension and the other. You need to shift right click with both an empty hand and offhand. As a note, the mining dimension is disabled in the ATM 6 to the sky mod pack. Okay. Um, we should try it out because that teleport pad doesn't look very expensive. Use the teleport pad in the nether. Little is known about this place, but it seems where piglins come from. Huge underground cities exist in any biomes with tree cover on the surface as well. That sounds kind of neat. I want to check that out. So apparently the other is where we get vibranium, right? It's found in the other. Uh, all the modium ore can be found in the mining dimension if it's enabled. I don't know if it is. We could try it though, right? Oh, we need the modium nuggets. Okay, so never mind. I thought those were gold nuggets for a second, but nope. All right. Um, so we we got the quest book for the all the modium. Found in mountain biomes inside cave ceilings and walls with additional deposits. Yes, but that's not a thing that we're going to find here, right? Am I crazy? So there's armor, food items, tools, bartering. Maybe piglins can trade for the nuggets? That might be the way to go. Hey, speak of the devil, who showed up just in time? <gasps> nice, it does work. Did he turn into another wandering trader? That's hilarious. Strider, sheep, horse, donkey, bat. Hey, get back here, bat. Don't even think about flying away. Okay, good. Wandering trader, goat. Did we burn through all our redstone already? We absolutely did. Let's use glowstone. If I remember, that has a higher EMC value than redstone, right? 64 versus 256. Yeah, that'll last a little longer. Ooh, a parrot. Panda. Squid. Horse. Llama. Pig. I'd really like a cow, if you don't mind. Chicken might be nice to hang on to. I'll hang on to a chicken. Come here, you. Let's go. You're with me. That works. Sheep? Yeah, I'll do that. I would like a sheep. Now, where do you think that wandering trader went? I know he's invisible. This is a good way to get passive mobs, right? Hey, there he was. <laughs> nice. Donkey, low squid. Okay. Uh, get back here, you. Oh, we're out of stuff. All right, so I think I've figured out what's up. Like, uh, so I, I dug through the quest here, and it looks like... All the modium ingots come from the Twilight Forest in this mod pack. Haha! -ha! That's pretty cool. Unobtainium comes from the end, I think. Um, so, what I think we need to do is go to the Twilight Forest, 
get unobtainium. Then we can make our teleport pad to get to the other. Place the pad down in the nether and shift right click with an empty hand. Then we go to the other dimension where we'll find vibranium. That sounds cool. Um, so that's the quest line. We fi I finally found it in the book here. So we'll have to do Twilight Forest first. Now it does mention that you need a netherite pickaxe to mine this. Netherite can be obtained from scraps and sieving. So if we want a netherite pickaxe, we're clearly gonna need some netherite, uh, which is gonna need scraps, which we can sieve from crushed netherrack, which we can make um, presumably in the crusher from mechanism, sweet. Uh, and netherrack we can get by putting redstone into a stone barrel filled with lava. Boom, netherrack, cool. Now I'm curious real quick, and I wanna test this. Um, can we, can we do this? If I wanted to um, extract and insert, would you do that for me? Yes, you would, beautiful. All right, cool. Um, and then if I wanted to, uh, what I'll probably, yeah, let's do that. Extract on orange, insert on orange, sweet. So if I did this, bada bing, bada boom. That's how we get netherrack, my friends. That's pretty cool, right? Not bad at all. And then we can take our netherrack. We can crusher it. Now here's something else that I noticed about crushed netherrack. Um, if we sieve it with uh, emerald mesh, we have a chance to get netherite scrap, but we get two new things if we sieve it with a netherite mesh, including Inferium. And I'm going to go out on the limb and say this might be one of the few ways to get Inferium in this pack. Um, obviously you can get Inferium from, you know, ores and seeds and all that stuff. I don't know if the ores spawn somewhere. Maybe they do, maybe they don't, I'm not sure. But looks like this might be how we get into uh, mystical agriculture as well. So we would probably want to make a netherite mesh. So I'm thinking we want to take our, yes, we'll need a smithing table. Okay, easy peasy. So let's do that. Um, so crush netherrack can go in here. And we'll just have to see if we got, yeah, we didn't, but that's okay. Cool. And then you're getting more netherrack for me. So that's pretty easy, right? Now we might have to wait for the lava to build up, but we shouldn't have to wait long because we have a lot of lava production going on. So quick note, netherite is not common, um, especially at the emerald tier. You have about a 1% chance, I guess you could say on average to get it. Uh, now at the netherite tier, you have a 5% chance. So I think we should definitely get the netherite mesh first. That'll give us faster access to netherite, right? Um, so that should be cool. So if I throw that in there, we'll see if we get anything. We get some stuff. Mostly gold, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like we're mostly getting gold. So what I'm going to have to do between episodes here is probably sieve a bunch of sand, get a lot of redstone. Um, and then convert that redstone into netherite rack and, and, and do all the stuffs to get some netherite. So how about we wrap up the episode here. We'll come back next time. I'll have a netherite ingot. We'll get a netherite mesh. Hopefully that'll make it easy to get us more netherite. Then we can get a netherite pick. Then we'll head to the Twilight Forest, do a little bit of Twilight Forest adventuring, and that would be fun. Does that sound cool? Uh, we'll probably want to get our jetpack, and we'll probably want to get some better armor before we pop into the Twilight Forest, because by better armor, I mean some armor at all. I've got literally zero, but that's okay. We'll get there. Uh, yeah, so that'll be fun. All right, for now, Double 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun with this pack so far. So for now, take it easy.